It's been fun, but we're through. I stared at her. Had Amanda really just said those words? No, please don't say that, I pleaded. I love you. Sorry, John. I need some excitement in my life, she said. Amanda picked up her bag and walked out of the restaurant, leaving me sitting at the table all alone. I felt heartbroken. How was I going to be able to live without her? We'd only been dating for six months, but I knew she was the one for me. I put my hand in my pocket and pulled out the box. I opened it up and looked at the shining diamond ring inside. Only a few moments ago, I had been nervously thinking about how I was going to propose to her, and now my whole world had come crashing down. I threw the ring as hard as I could. It hit the wall on the other side of the room. Everyone in the restaurant stopped what they were doing and looked to see what had happened. The waiter, who had known about my plan, looked at me in pity. I wanted to scream at him, at everyone else in the restaurant, but I just signaled for the bill. Before I go on, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell too to make sure that you don't miss out on any crazy stories. Money had never been an issue for me. My parents were crazy wealthy and I could buy anything I wanted. I suppose deep down, I was always suspicious that she had only been dating me for my money. But I didn't care because I loved her. I couldn't believe she had called me boring. That had hurt. Well, I wasn't going to waste my time with girls anymore. I wasn't going to risk getting heartbroken again. I decided there and then that I would throw myself into what I was good at, making money. I had always been good at picking the right thing to invest in, and Bitcoin was no exception. I'd been thinking about starting the trade in cryptocurrency for a while. Well, now I had the time. With no girlfriend to distract me, I knew I would soon be making lots of money. I watched every day as my investment grew. The profit I was making was out of this world. I had more money than I could even dream of. I bought a huge mansion and a big red sports car. I went on luxury holidays around the world, but something was missing. What was the point of having all that money when I had no one to share it with? One morning, I was sitting in front of my computer watching the numbers in my account steadily go up, when suddenly an advertisement popped up on the screen. Get your perfect wife for only 100 bitcoins. The advert had me intrigued. I clicked on the link and it took me straight to the company's website. Find a wife. I read through the info. It was true. The company promised to find you your ideal partner in exchange for 100 bitcoins. Now, it may not sound like a lot to you if you're unfamiliar with Bitcoin, but trust me, it's a lot of money. I thought about it for a few minutes, and even though I knew it was expensive, I just wanted to find love, so I began to fill in the online form. I had to list all my requirements. I typed in blonde hair, blue eyes, funny, and kind. I paid the 10 Bitcoin deposit and clicked send. The rest of the payment I could make in installments. It was only a few days later that I received the email from Find a Wife. My heart was beating so fast as I clicked on the email to open it. As I read the first line, I started beaming from ear to ear. We have found you your perfect wife, it said. The email went on to say that I was supposed to meet her at an Italian restaurant in my town on Friday night at 7 o'clock. I was so excited. I put on my best clothes and drove to the restaurant. As soon as I saw her sitting at the bar, I knew the company had done a good job. Hi, I'm John. You must be Katie, I said, handing her a huge bunch of flowers I had bought for her. Hi, John, she said, smiling. I had never believed in love at first sight before, but now I did. It was like an explosion inside my heart and my stomach turned over in excitement. She was everything I could ever wish for. It was as if I had known her forever. We chatted and laughed for hours. I felt sure she was madly in love with me too. At the end of the evening, I dropped her home. As I gave her a kiss, I whispered in her ear, I think I'm in love with you. I want you to move in with me. She looked at me in surprise. I know, it might seem a bit quick, I said, but when you know, you know. I think the same, she said. Yes, I would love to move in with you. From that moment on, we spent every day together. I just loved doing the ordinary things like cooking and watching TV together. I didn't want to risk anything spoiling what we had, so I kept her all to myself. But one day, as we were sitting eating dinner, she said to me, John, do you think we could go out sometime? It's a bit boring staying home all the time. 
Her words stung my ears. I was worried she would dump me like my ex-girlfriend did. I'm sorry, Katie, I said. I've just been enjoying having you all to myself. Of course we can go out. I'll organize something. Katie smiled and put her arms around me. I love you so much, John, she said. I relaxed when I heard her words. She wasn't the same as my ex. She loved me, and we were going to spend the rest of our lives together. I called my friends and arranged to meet them the following weekend at our local bar. Katie, I want to introduce you to all of my friends, I said. Katie seemed excited at the thought of a night out, and to be honest, I was looking forward to it too. When we got to the bar, I spotted my group of friends sitting in the corner. We got our drinks and went over to them. Hi everyone, I said. This is Katie. Everyone thought she was so nice. Mike, my best friend, whispered to me, Wow, John, you've got a good one there. She's perfect. I had never felt happier in my whole life, but it didn't last long. It was when I was on my way back from the toilet that I noticed them. Mike was whispering something into Katie's ear, and she was laughing. My heart sank. Was Mike flirting with Katie? I thought. Jealousy flared up inside me like a ball of fire. I stormed over to the two of them. What do you think you're doing? I screamed. You're flirting with each other right under my nose. What are you talking about? Mike said. We're only chatting. We're not doing anything wrong. I grabbed Katie and pulled her out of the bar. Come on, we're going home, I said. John, you've got it all wrong, Katie said. I don't like Mike. He's nothing compared to you. I calmed down when I heard her words. I felt so stupid for overreacting, but I guess that's what love can do to you. I apologized to Katie. I'm sorry, do you still love me? Katie <laughs> laughed at me. <laughs> of course I do, you silly thing, she said as she playfully punched me on the arm. I should never have doubted her. I needed to trust that she wasn't going to break my heart. After that, things were good between us again. We even had our friends around for a barbecue a couple of times. Mike and I were good. We had been friends for a long time. He wouldn't fall out with me over a silly argument. It was towards the end of the summer when the unimaginable happened. I went into my office one morning and opened my computer. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Literally, overnight, Bitcoin had crashed. I had lost almost everything in less than 24 hours. All of my coins were worthless. As I sat there looking at the screen, I saw I had an email from Find a Wife. I opened it. It was the invoice for the next installment. How on earth was I going to be able to pay it now that I had lost everything? I closed the email. I needed some time to think, time to get the money together. But find a wife wasn't going to wait. The next day, there was a knock at my door. I went to see who it was. John, we're here for your next installment. A man dressed in a black suit said, either pay us now or we are taking Katie away. I'm sorry, please give me more time, I begged. The two men pushed past me and grabbed hold of Katie. Leave her alone, I screamed at them. I stood in front of the door to try to stop them from leaving, but they just knocked me to the ground. Katie was crying and they dragged her out to their car. Help me, help me, she screamed. I tried to fight them, but it was no use. They pushed her inside the car. Don't worry, I called to her. I'm going to find a way to get you back. I was shaking with rage. No way was I going to let them get away with it. They couldn't keep her from me. We were in love. I did some investigating and found out that they had taken her to a remote island. They were keeping her locked up in an old warehouse there. I vowed that I was going to find a way to rescue her. I waited until it was late at night and crept down to the port. There was no one around. The only sound was coming from the seagulls as they flew above the boat. I walked along the jetty. At the end, I could see a speedboat. There was a man standing on the deck. I told the man that I needed to get to the island. At first, he was reluctant to take me, but when I pulled out a wad of money, he soon changed his mind. We sped through the ocean towards the island. When we arrived, I jumped onto the shore. Wait here for me, I told the man. I won't be long. It didn't take me long to find the warehouse. It was surrounded by a high metal fence. I climbed up and jumped over to the other side. I landed on the ground with a thump. I looked around. I fully expected someone would come and find me, but there was no one there. I crept around the side of the building. I was looking for an open window or door, but everything was locked up on the ground floor. Suddenly, I saw a ladder lying on the ground. I picked it up and leaned it against the wall in front of one of the upstairs windows. 
I shot up it as quick as I could and climbed through the window. I didn't notice there was a guard sitting at a desk. As I landed on the floor with a thud, he spun around. Hey, what are you doing? He said, jumping up. I knew if I didn't do something, he would capture me. I looked around me, desperately trying to find something to use against him. In the corner, I spotted a fire extinguisher. I picked it up and blasted it straight into his face. The force of the spray flung him to the other side of the room and knocked him unconscious. On his desk was a bunch of TV screens. On one of them, I could see Katie. She was sitting on a bed in a room. At the bottom of the screen, I saw it said room 10. I ran out of the room and along the corridor. Eventually, I found room number 10. I kicked the door open and burst into the room. Katie looked at me in shock. Before she had time to say anything, I had grabbed her by the hand and dragged her out of the room. Come on, we have to get out of here, I said. I ran out of the building, pulling her behind me. I could hear the sounds of men chasing after us. Stop, stop, they shouted. I didn't stop running until we got to the boat. I jumped on first and turned to help Katie onto the boat, but she let go of my hand. What are you doing, I asked. Quick, get on the boat. Oh, poor John, she said laughing. You had no idea. I didn't love you. I just wanted you for your money. She turned and looked at the guard. Arrest him. The guard jumped onto the boat and put me in handcuffs. I'm not a prisoner here, she said. I own Find a Wife, and I'm living here because I love it. I couldn't believe it. She never loved me? It was all an act? The guards dragged me away and locked me in a cell. They said I had been trespassing, and since I knew Katie's secret, I could never leave. So I'm now stuck on this island in the middle of nowhere. No one will come to rescue me because no one knows that I'm here. If you guys have any ideas how I can escape from here, please tell me in the comments below.